Hi, welcome to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. I'm going to take you through the worked solutions for the S1 paper that was done just yesterday. So that means that I'm recording this before the mark scheme has been released, so I don't have answers to check against. If you spot any mistakes that I make, please just leave a comment um, and I'll, I'll update the description of the video to um, annotate those details. All right, so let's go to question one. Uh, we've got 300 students at a music college and in the table some information about uh, the instrument that they um, play. We're told that they all only play one of them. There's nobody that plays like guitar and piano, for example, and that everybody has to play something. Right, find the probability that a randomly chosen student at the college is male and does not play the piano. And what I've done on the table, just to make things a bit easier, I just added up those totals um, in case I need them later on. Okay, so male and doesn't play the piano means that they are guitar and flute. So we put those two together. That makes 120 out of 300 altogether. Then part two is to determine whether the event's um, randomly chosen student is male and randomly chosen student doesn't play the piano are independent. Now, if they are independent, we can find the probability of each of them and multiply them together and we'll get the same as if we worked out the probability of both of them. Right, so the probability of each of them reading off of that table from um, uh, above is for, we've got 160 males out of 300 and we've got 225 of the students don't play the piano out of the 300. The males and not playing the piano is 120, that was from part one. So now we compare, if we did these two separately and times them together, we get two fifths, which is the same as this one here, the 120 over 300. So therefore, um, the probability of both things together is equal to the probability of those two things multiplied together, therefore they are independent events. Right, question two, how many different arrangements of the letters in corridors? So we have two, zeros, uh, two O's and three R's as repeats. Nine letters altogether divided by the repeats comes to 30,240. Then part two is to say that we are going to stick a D at the end. So that's our um, fixed point to start off the, f the first end. And then at the um, end of that, we've got a space where we are either going to put an O or an R. OK, so this one actually took me a little while to think about how we actually solve it. And I'm not 100 percent of the s sure of the solution. So if anybody has um, reason to believe I've made a mistake, please just put a, a comment below. OK, so what I've done is we do D and then we have eight spaces to fill. Now, if we had no restrictions on those eight spaces, we would have 3,360 ways to do that. So that's eight factorial divided by the repeats. Then I thought the easiest way to, to think about what the end could be was to think about the things that, that don't get repeated. So rather than looking for the O's and the R's, because the repeats can confuse things, we could do... Um, if I put a C at the end or an I at the end or an S at the end, because there's only one of them, it's a bit easier to think about. So if we were ending with a C, we would have seven spaces in the middle to fill up. Um, and the things that we've got left to choose from are um, seven factorial. We've still got two repeated O's and three repeated R's, so we divide by those repeats. So there's 420 ways to make the arrangement where we've stuck C at the end. We do the same thing with I and with S. They come out just the same because there's just one of the I's and the S's. So if we add those up, we've got those three things that are not what we were looking for. So we can take that away from the total um, possible for filling those eight spaces after the D. So we've got the 3,360, 3, take away three lots of 420, making 2,100. Now, I'm sure there are multiple ways to do this, um, and I... Again, welcome any feedback if I've made mistakes there. Question three, we've got um, another thing about arrangements uh, with perms and comms. So we've got seven people being made um, as a team. We can choose from six attackers, five defenders, four midfielders, but we must have at least three attack, two defense and one mid. So then um, what I've started to think about is the possible combinations that we could do. So three attack, two defenders and one midfielder 
means that we've already taken up six of the spots. We just need to fill in uh, the last spot. So if we've got, we could either fill in an extra attacker, an extra defender, or an extra midfield to those six. Um, each of those possible uh, options we need to work out separately. So if we had four attackers, we would be choosing four from the six possible, then two possible, two from two defenders from the possible five, and one midfielder from the possible four. Um, those are combinations because it doesn't matter what order we pick them in, and that comes to 600. Follow the same process for the other two options and then add them together to get 2,600 uh, possible ways to make that, that team. Part two, the team of seven is chosen um, to travel in two cars. Four go in one car and uh, the other three go in the other. So we've got four going in one and three in the other. Now, once you've picked um, the four to go in the first car, the rest by default go in the second car. So we can actually just not even think about that that second car. Um, it won't give us any extra options. It's just the leftovers go in that car. So all we need to do is pick seven, um, choose four. So choosing seven, four people from seven to go in the first car, and then everybody else will go in the other one anyway. So we've got 35 arrangements that we could um, do that in. Incidentally, you could also have done um, choosing who goes in the car with three and the rest go into the, the other car. That comes out to the same number. Seven choose three is also 35. Now, for question four, we have a uh, normal distribution. We've got mainland college, normally distributed, details of that distribution. Um, the, we're told that the probability of being less than a certain height is 0.67. So I've put this into a diagram. Probability that x is less than that height is 0 0.67. So then you work through uh, that uh, normal distribution calculation, um, turn it into z, work out what phi would need to be, what value gives 0 0.67, set our um, equation of h minus 148 over 8 equal to that value, work it through to get h is 151.52. Two is asking us to find an expected value. Uh, so first of all, we need to find the probability that they lie within half a standard deviation of the mean. So half a standard deviation would be four. So we can go four above 148 or four below 148. So we're looking at this range here, which we just convert to um, finding the probability that X is between 144 and 152. So the next steps are just working through um, that normal distribution question, uh, working out the phi value. Uh, we can just do half of that range and then double it because it's symmetrical and we get 0 0.383. Now that's the probability of it happening. We want an expected value from the 120 students, multiply it by that probability and we can expect 45.96 or if we're rounding to a whole number of students, 46 students within that range. Question five asks us to draw a cumulative frequency graph from that table. So I'll just zoom that so you can see it. Um, oh, I've left something off the axis. And here we have the cumulative frequency um, curve. Now it's got some extra lines on there. Those are for the questions coming up in just a second. But first of all, you would plot this curve. Um, each of those dots needs to be at the top of the interval. Uh, so for example, with the 0 to 10 gets plotted at 10, we plot 16. So there's at 10 minutes, we plot 16 people. Use your graph to estimate the median. The median happens exactly in the middle, which would be at 100. Use your ruler, read it off. Um, now the accuracy of that will depend on how exactly your curve goes and you'll be given a, a little bit of leeway I get 29 minutes off of my curve then for 80 of the drivers the time taken was at least t minutes so t minutes or more so that's saying that our top 80 people um, was uh, t minutes or more so the top 80 would be the 120th person and above so um, we just read off and I'll go back to the graph for that so there's a hundred and uh, the 120th person and we can read that off as being 35 minutes then calculate an estimate of the mean taken by all 200 drivers to travel to the car park so for this we do the midpoint of the interval so this was going from 0 to 10 we had 16 people 
So we do halfway, which is 5 times the 16. From 10 to 20, we had 50 people. So halfway from 10 to 20 is 15 times it by the 50. So we're using those midpoints as estimates for each interval, multiplying by the frequency. That gets us a total of 35,880, which we divide by our 200 people, um, and we can get 179.4 minutes. We've got a very straightforward um, probability question for 6 which is three red, five white, they get selected without replacement. So what's the probability that both are going to be red? We'll have three out of the eight, first of all. That red gets taken out, so we're left with two out of seven for the second red, uh, which simplifies down to three over 28. Show that the probability of the balls, that the balls of different colors is 15 over 28. So different colors means that we would have red, then white, followed by white, then red. And you can get the probabilities of those off the tree diagram, and it's 15 over 28. Given that the second ball chosen is red, find the probability the first ball chosen is red. So first being red, given that the second is red. So that's the probability of the first being red and the second being red, uh, divided by the probability of them both being red, and then the probability of getting white then red. So reading those off the tree diagram, and continuing that through, we get two sevenths. To do a probability distribution for the number of red balls that we could get, um, be either zero, one, or two out of our two picks, we might get no reds, one red, or two of them. And you can use your probability tree diagram to work out the chance of each of those uh, from what we had before. So no reds would be white, then white. The one red we already worked out in the previous question, uh, white, red, red, white, and then two reds, uh, which we have also worked out in the previous question. You can also check that these add up to 1. The variance of x is to do the expectation of x minus the, um, sorry, the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x all squared. So we need each of those. Now you use the probability distribution table that you just worked out in the first part, and you're going to do um, x times its probability and add them all together like so. And then for e of x squared, we square x and times it by its probability and add them all up. Then the variance will be e of x squared minus e squared of x. And that comes to 45 over 112, or if you did it in decimal form, 0.402. Brings us to our final question, where we're told about some supporters for these two choirs. I've put them into a little Venn diagram over here to help me picture what's happening. There's no overlap. We're told that no one in the audience supports both of the choirs. Six people are chosen at random. Find the probability that no more than two of the six are note supporters. So this is a binomial distribution with six trials. Now the probability they are a note supporter is 0.3. We want the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, and we use binomial um, distribution to do that. Then find the probability that none of the six people support either of these choirs. That means that all six of them support no, neither of the two choirs. Now that was a 0.25. So the people in the audience that don't support either of them, the chance of that was 0.25, and that would happen six times over. So that's to the power of six. Then a sample of 240 people is chosen at random from the audience. Use a suitable approximation to find the probability that less than 50 of them do not support either of the choirs. So we've got a, a binomial again with 240 trials. The chance of getting the thing that we're looking for is 0.25, that they don't support either of the choirs. This can be um, done as a approximation using the normal distribution, which means that we have to apply a continuity correction and then carry on working that through, and you get 0 0.0588. All right, thanks for watching. Hope that helped you out. Um, if it did, like the video, hit that subscribe, help other people find it as well, and good luck with the rest of your exams.